Hello again, I'm Blunty. Guess what I'm up to today? The uh, hint is the enormous inflatable red android beast in the background. I'm down at Circular Key here where Vodafone are putting on a thing about the, uh, the HTC Desire HD phone, which is exclusive to them forever in Australia, it seems. And, you know, HTC Desire HD is the the big deal Android phone. It's the flagship from HTC. It's supposed to be the biggest, the best, the brightest, the most awesome. So I've come down here to get a hands-on with it. And uh, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I see. An enormous red inflatable Vodafone Android thingy is kind of awesome. I'm already happy. But let's go have a look at the device and uh, see what's on offer. My very first thought when I was handed the phone to play with for an hour was how thin and light it felt. It runs Android, it's got a large 4.3 inch 480 by 800 LCD touchscreen and on the back is the 8 megapixel camera and dual LED flash module. It's got all the bells and whistles and gizmos you'd expect from a flagship Android smartphone. It was responsive and it ran smoothly, and it's the first phone to use the brand new 1GHz Scorpion processor. It has 1.5GB of internal memory, and of course you can expand that by up to 32GB with a micro SD card. But you know what? I'll save the more thorough breakdown of the hardware until I get a review unit in hand and give it a proper run through. For now though, I focused my attention on the camera and especially the 720p video recording function. The camera app booted extremely quickly, fastest I've ever seen on a phone actually. The interface is uncluttered and sensible, there's also a bunch of built in filters and effects. Mostly what you'd expect, no great surprises here, and of course there's one or two I could never ever imagine being any use whatsoever. They're just there to look bizarre and wacky I guess. But the interesting thing about many of them is that when selected you actually get a slider to vary the effect or intensity before you snap the pick. And a second slider for digital zoom too, providing you with some extra creative freedom quickly. In video mode you get a slightly more restricted set of filters and this time you don't get the ability to dynamically adjust the effect. Default is your only option. Options wise you get the chance to adjust the white balance manually and all the standard stuff including adjusting the resolution and the excellent ability to fiddle with the exposure, contrast, saturation and sharpness. But hey, we can talk! Or we can show, so let's take a look at some untouched video the HTC Desire HD spat directly onto the tiny memory card. The image is nice and sharp and the depth of field is surprisingly nice from a camera phone. To my eyes in auto mode the image seemed a little dark and there's a loss of detail in the shadows. And as you can see here the auto exposure seems to flicker a bit indecisively. Importantly, there is minimal motion blur, so the image always remains crisp. And this is a test of doing a song portrait, of course, testing out both the, how well the microphone picks up, I guess, uh, relative to noise environment, bit of wind, noise, city noise, birds and stuff. Now, there is no front-facing camera on this phone, of course, so when you're doing a self-portrait shot like this, I've got no idea what the framing is, which is a problem for me. As you can imagine, I wasn't impressed with the microphone's quality. It was thin and hissy, and this is a surprise, as the marketing materials for this phone make a pretty big deal about it having Dolby digital technology and other fancy audio processing stuff built in. Clearly though, this didn't extend to the very, very ordinary microphone. And here is the obligatory direct comparison of the high def video coming out of the iPhone 4. There are clear differences in both the white balance and auto exposure and saturation. The HTC picks up much more detail on the bright end, but it does so by sacrificing detail on the dark end. And the automatic white balance on the HTC seems to push pretty obviously towards the cool end of the spectrum, which makes the sky and the water look lovely, but it's not very accurate. On the whole, I was impressed by the camera on the HTC Desire HD, and most of the issues I've mentioned with the camera here are easily addressable by throwing the camera into manual mode and setting it up properly before a shoot, which is something you don't even have the option of doing with the iPhone 4, it's worth noting. But then again, having to go into manual mode and set everything up manually is an extra step you have to do just to make sure you get accurate pictures, so yeah, six or one half dozen the other, depends on what you like best, I guess. 
The hardware overall felt fast, responsive and well built, and with a bit of luck I'll be getting my hands on a review unit soon-ish so I can bring you a full review. For now though, I'll say if you are in the market for a new Android phone, this one needs to be on your list. Thanks for watching, I'm Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.